What up crew? Today I'm going to be showing you how to make your own custom playing cards with Make Playing Cards. So, let's do it. All the prototype cards that I printed for the Candice Lupus deck were through MPC. So I'm going to show you exactly how I did it step by step so that you can get your own custom playing cards in your hands within a couple of weeks. So, let's jump right into the computer. One of the first things that I knew I needed were the standard card faces for the 52 playing cards. So Ecat was actually gracious enough to provide these in a video that she made. Of course, these aren't the exact ones that are used for the bicycle deck because that would be uh, copyright if you went ahead and printed those. So I'm gonna leave a link down in the description and you should see it on your screen now. Uh, so this is the link that she provided. As you can see, it has a uh, poker tuck die lines. It has the custom guideline packet. But right now we're just interested in the card faces standard American and you can just go ahead and hit download on there. Of course, I already have it downloaded right here and you can see it has all of the uh, standard card faces that we know. So once you have these images downloaded, the next thing you want to do is open them up inside a photo editor. The one I use is Photoshop, but if you want to use a free one, I also recommend GIMP. I'll put the link down to it in the description. So you open this up and you go to file, new, and you wanna create a custom template that is 816 pixels in width and 110 pixels in height. And I think this is the format that MPC takes, so this is what I use. It took me a while to figure all this out, so uh, I think this will really help you out. So I have the height width, the resolution, I went with 300 pixels per inch. The color mode, I went with CMYK because that's what the United States Play Card Company uses. And then I went ahead and clicked create. So now we have our template right here. We can go to our location where we have those card faces downloaded. As you can see, there's two of clubs, two of diamonds, and uh, you know, it just goes down the list. So I'm going to take the two of clubs EPS file and just click and drag that over onto the page. I double click and now you can see what I see. So from here, you could see this border outline, right? So first thing you want to do is get rid of that. So I'm going to take this eraser, if I can find it, there it is. And uh, of course I have to select the correct layer, use the eraser. And now I can go ahead and just erase this border. All right, so once this border has been erased, the next thing you want to do is shift this image or this, this layer with the two of clubs over by seven pixels. And the reason for that is because if you were to go ahead and click and drag this onto the MPC, um, I guess, place where you put the cards, the template, it's going to be shifted a bit to the left and you want it to be exactly center. So after a lot of a lot of testing, I found that seven pixels does the job perfectly. And I can show you uh, the prototype cards that I had printed with this. So uh, keyboard, of course, is behind me. So from 60, we're going to go to 67 in the X direction. And of course, I did not click enter, so it didn't save. All right, so now that we have this card, we're just gonna go to file, export, quick export as PNG. And you can see I had already saved it here, but I'm just gonna rename it to two of clubs. All right, so that's pretty much how you're gonna do every single card. I know it's gonna take quite some time, but every single card, it shouldn't take more than maybe like 30 minutes at the most I would say because once you get the rhythm down you just you just get it down but just just so this video is a bit longer and because maybe you want to do this together let's do a couple of more of these So now that you've finished all the faces for the cards that you've made, the next thing you want to do is work on the back because we can't just have blank backs. Actually, maybe that would look good. I don't know. But anyway, I would assume that you want some kind of custom back. So again, we're going to do the same thing. File, new, the exact same format that we used last time and we click create. So from here, we want to create the right size back. So I would suggest first thing you want to do, come down here with the square tool and just draw a rectangle or a rectangle tool, whatever, whatever it is. Uh, you want it to be exactly, I have it listed down here. You don't, you don't want the image uh, linked here. You want the width to be, I have it written down, 668. So 668. 
and you want the height to be um, 970. Right, so that's what you want here. And you want this uh, curvature to go down to, uh, I think about 20 pixels. That's way too much. You know what, 21 is fine. I'm having some issues, we're gonna stick with 21. All right, so we're gonna, we've done that. We wanna just center it now. And again, this center is not exactly the same as how it uploads to MPC. So you wanna actually shift this over by 12 pixels. And again, you're shifting it over um, to the right, so in the X direction by 12. So right now it's 74, we wanna shift that to 86. I think next time I'm just gonna keep the keyboard here just to make my life easier. So uh, we have that. And now of course you can design it however you like. If you wanna, I, I, don't, I don't really know what you wanna do, but uh, if you wanna, if you wanna go crazy, oh, I didn't even change the color. Did not even change the color. And of course it's on the other screen. There we go, sign it right there and we're all set. This is my beautiful back design. So of course you're gonna do the same thing. Export, save as PNG. And uh, I'm just gonna call this back. All right, so now you have all the faces made, you have the uh, back design made. The next thing is actually putting it into MPC. So let's open that up now. So boom, I have this MPC page here. And of course you want standard uh, poker size card. So 63 by 88 millimeter. Of course, I'll put this link in the description so it'd be easier for you to find. The card stock, I'd recommend going with M31 linen just because the cards feel a little better. Uh, size of the deck, uh, I would say 55 cards. 72 is a bit much, unless you wanna go with some custom cards that you wanna uh, try to design. But I'd recommend just going with 55 for now. Full color print, color, full color print. Uh, finish, you want the beta playing card finish. And of course, packaging, you can, uh, if you wanna actually make like a custom uh, tuck case, I'll cover that in another video but you can do that as well. But I just picked a plain white box. If I could find that, yep, plain white tuck box. And that's pretty much it. And that'll get you this plain white tuck box here. So then you just click start your design and this site takes like 10 years to load. Uh, so image, of course you want the card fronts to have different images because if they're all the same, that's weird. So you want different images. And you could see that this is the template that uh, pops up. So if I come here now, and as you can see, these are actually the cards that I made for the Canis Lupus deck. Of course, this is not the actual, actual cards. These are just the first prototype that I ever made. So you wanna bring these in, in the exact order that you want the deck printed. So the first card, of course, first card, second card, third card, you, you pretty much go down the line. Uh, just like that. All you have to do now is just click and drag. That's it. And of course, you just want to verify. Like I said, the seven pixels gets you exactly this in the center. So you just want to verify that this looks good. So you can click edit and you can see that it's very, very close. If not perfectly centered, it's very close to perfectly centered. So you have that there. Of course, you can click and drag the rest. But let me just show you the cards that uh, we made. There it is, NPC tutorial. So of course you can drag on, we already did the two of clubs, but two of diamonds. As you can see, this is also centered pretty well. And now I'm not gonna go through the entire thing, but you get, you get the picture. All you have to do is click and drag and uh, choose the order that you want. Once you've done that, you click on next step. Of course, it's telling me there's some blank cards. Make sure there are no blank cards in your design, unless that's uh, what you want. You click okay, take some time, here we go. Yeah, we don't really want to add any text to the front. And now here we are at the custom back. Of course, uh, if, you, if, you, if you want to create a uh, marked deck, I would recommend going with different images. Of course, that would be a lot more effort, but right now we want to keep this basic. So we're going to say same image. So same for all backs. So now you just see this one card right here and we made our custom back that looks just amazing. Pull that right over here. And of course it's not centered. When I tried this out yesterday, it was centered perfectly. All right, so this is not perfect, but it's close enough. So I'd say shift it. Um, originally when I did it, it was 
uh, 70 pixels. So I'd say shift it to the right, either five or six pixels, and that should get it perfectly centered. Again, I'm not sure why it didn't work this time, but when I tried it out yesterday, it worked when it did when I did 12 pixels. So uh, yeah, that is what it is. But there you go, there you have your custom back design. I would assume you make something better than this because this is, I don't even know what this is. So once that's done, click on next step. All right, and of course, and it uh, gives you options to do anything else that you wanna make changes to. We don't wanna do that, we click next step again. And now you get the preview and add to cart. So here you can see you'll have all your faces here along with the back design. So if you were doing a marked deck, it would show you what the front design is, what the back design is. And once you're happy with all this, you just gotta come down here. Yes, I confirm all the images and uh, everything that you pretty much uploaded are your design and you have full authorization to use them. You click add to cart. And oh, I, actually I forgot to check this off, which I just told you to check off, but there you go, add to cart. And uh, then you're all set to go ahead and uh, do your thing. Once you followed all the steps that I showed you and placed your order, you'll get something that looks exactly like this, a blank white tuck box. And inside that tuck box is your hard work, your design, your own custom playing cards. Now these are the first ever prototypes that I created for the Canis Supers playing cards. So of course I've made a couple of changes since then. I've printed a total of four prototypes. And I think the main thing that I really looked for in each of these printings were the colors that I wanted to use and uh, what would look good on the back, what would look good on the front. So if you're actually doing this for prototyping, I would actually recommend um, going ahead and not printing a full deck just yet. I would recommend doing two prototype prints. The first print, I'd recommend just printing out a couple of uh, card faces. And of course, some face cards, some non-face cards, just to see what they would look like. And then I'd also recommend printing a couple of different types of backs, just so you can see what the backs look like as well. And do them with different colors or different shades of the color, so you know exactly which shade that you want, right? And I think that would have probably saved me a couple hundred bucks if I just did that the first time. Right, so that's the whole purpose of the prototyping. But of course, if you just want these to have as your own custom playing cards and go ahead, your first print, just go crazy with it. Now, I just wanna go over the handling of these playing cards because you may not know if you're, especially if you're doing this for the first time, how these uh, cards handle compared to a regular bicycle deck or compared to like a nicer end deck. Um, they're not great. But seriously, these cards are actually quite thick, which makes them difficult to handle difficult to do with springs or uh, things of that nature. Of course, it's possible, it just requires a lot more effort. So if you wanna print these out for yourself, custom deck for cardistry, I would not recommend it. Definitely do not use these, uh, this custom deck for cardistry. Of course, if you wanna use these for card magic, they handle fine. They're just not something that you'd probably be used to using. So they will feel a lot more different in your hands, again, because they're thicker and they're more uh, glossy. So. Honestly, the, there are only two reasons why I'd recommend someone to uh, use these. Again, one, if you're doing any type of prototyping, uh, I think that that would be really important to actually have these cards in your hands to hold. And two, if you just want your own custom playing cards to actually use as playing cards, which I don't think I've done in quite some time. I always use other people's cards for, for playing cards. But yeah, if you wanna use them just for play, I would 100% highly recommend these. Hopefully I was able to help you out with some of the experiences that I had with uh, make playing cards. And uh, hopefully this is a great guide to help you on your own journey. So uh, all that being said, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Otherwise, peace out.